everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So when I done my creative card series, I done a triple circle easel card. And you, loads of you loved it, You've lots of you have made it, you've been sharing it. But I also had a lot of people asking if I could make one in a square size, so that's what I've done. So I've made, it's the, I think it's the same size envelope, I'd have to double check. But I've made the envelope with the envelope punch board using the same papers. I'll show you all those in a moment. So it comes out. Now you can decorate this piece here if you want to but when you start to put it together so this one goes up exactly the same way as the circle one this one goes like so and then this one like that so you don't actually end up seeing anything here but I know some of you have put things there and you you totally can so if I just bring it up you can see the profile oh it's hard to do because obviously I don't want to fall there we go how lovely does that look I absolutely adore these papers it's from the making memories which is the new first edition paper pad but it's so lovely I really do enjoy making these so I, I love this sentiment again I'll show you all the supplies nothing says happy birthday like a piece of folded card so yeah I just gone a bit like I guess jokey with this one because I know um well I know who's going to get this one from me anyway so yeah I really really like it and then you can write your message on the back or you can have it in the traditional way with an easel card and that's you know either on this flat piece or on here but I just thought I'd rather keep that almost like a piece of art you know like a nice display in itself and just have my message in the back here you could obviously have it on all of that as well but then you just each piece sits on top of the other like so and then fits into that nice envelope okay so that's what we're going to make okay so that funny little sentiment is this one here which you've seen a lot it's called the little things and it's the woodware clear magic set nothing says happy birthday like a piece of folded card and i think today yeah i'm using that one are you celebrating 29 again they're kind of my favorites you can see the two i keep going to i've used that one and i've used that one but i haven't used those two yet but yeah love that one so i've already done that i've prepared a lot of all of it because again you don't need to watch me do this that's all my leaves. I'll talk you through the mats and layers. I've done my flowers. I'll show you what I used for those when we get to it. And again, the butterfly. Love the butterfly. That's using the pink rosa one, but I love it because it's got that body, which I think is just a nice little detail. Okay, so for the envelope, you want a piece of 11.5 by 11.5. It's the 6 by 8.5 envelope size, and it's the last measurement on the envelope punch board. So again, I will quickly show that at the end. So this is the paper pad there we go making memories also a lot of you ask me what I do with my scraps whenever I have paper pads for the time that I'm working through them I have a little folder like this where all my scraps go to and I sit that with my paper pad so if well, you know when I'm working on it I have both of these out and I find myself going to this more than breaking into fresh paper and then at the end of the day everything can go in there all the loose bits and it just keeps everything nice and tidy as well and you know if I do just want to do a scrap project I can just pull this out and everything is in there so it's everything for that paper pack and then you know if I get bored with it or it starts to really kind of thin down yeah everything just goes in here and then decide what to do with it afterwards so but it's handy it's just my way of storing and keeping things organized but yeah making memories a beautiful pack okay so I've got a six by six card blank which will measure 12 by six and you want to score along the 12 inch side at six inches at six inches and then you also want to score at three inches and fold and burnish okay so you'll have your two score lines three and six you want another piece at six by six and that is what we're going to stick over that front piece to form that first large easel okay so that's that one the mats and layers for that are five and three quarters by five and three quarters you want two pieces i'm using this silver mirrored card from dovecraft and then i've got two pieces of pattern paper which are five and a half by five and a half so again i've just dropped down in quarter inch increments which i do most of the time okay then for the next card size this is four and a half by four and a half so this is a piece of nine by four and a half along the nine inch side you want to score at two and a quarter and four and a half fold and burnish both of those and again you will have that easel you then want another piece of four and a half by four and a half cardstock and that is going to stick on the front like so so that's our second one the mats and layers for that exactly the same way so these both in silver are four and a quarter squared and then the pattern to go over the top of those 
are four by four squared, okay? And then the final small easel at the front, this one is a three and a half by three and a half. So this is a piece of cardstock that's seven by three and a half. And along the seven inch side, you want to score at one and three quarters and three and a half. Again, fold both of those. And then you want another piece that is three and a half by three and a half. And that is going to stick on the front to form our smallest easel. And then finally, the mats and layers for those are silver is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. I've got two pieces. And then the pattern is three by three. Again, two pieces. For my message on the back, this piece here is five and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then this on top is five and roughly, yeah, five and a half by two and a half. And I've just stamped my message there. And then this one here, the silver is two and a half by two and a half. And then that's just one of my nested square stitched frames, which is going to be roughly two and a quarter squared. Okay, and then again, we'll talk through all the decoration when I get to it. So, right, so first of all, get all the actual cards. So that's my large, my small, and my medium. Okay, so you should have the card, the folded card, and then the kind of loose topper piece. All right, I'm going to grab my glue, start with this one, just because I've grabbed it, so the middle one. I'm just going to cover the front half, the folded front half, which I will show you in more detail. So you can see where we fold it in half and then we've got that fold, so it's the easel, that front piece, that's the bit that you're covering in glue. And then if you put the whole thing flat with your fold at the top, okay, put this over the top and then you can make sure that you get everything nice and squared off so everything sits where it should, but you can add lots of pressure on it and make sure that you get that stuck down and then when you fold it up only half of it will stick and you get that nice easel okay so that's that one so you just want to do the same as that so again there's my fold along the top and my easel fold here I'm going to run glue on there and stick that one over and again there's that one folded down with the fold at the top glue on the bottom half and stick that one over Okay, so they're all stuck down. So next you want to add your mats and layers. So the largest silver ones, okay, and then the medium silver ones, and then the smallest silver ones. Obviously yours don't have to be silver, but they will go, one will go on top like that, and one will go on the bottom here. So every single one is gonna have a really nice little silver frame around it, and you know I love using mirrored cardstock. So again, exactly the same way, because we've dropped down a quarter of an inch on each one, you will get that same nice even border throughout. So I'm gonna go and stick those all down. Okay, so that's those now. Next, you wanna get your all your biggest mats and layers, your medium mats and layers, and your smallest, and you've guessed it, you do exactly the same again. So I'm gonna have the same as I did with the other one. So that's gonna go on the back, like that. And then this one is gonna go on the bottom, okay? And then you just wanna think about, you know, your colors kind of matching. So, you know, sit it kind of there, because it will hold itself up once you start to wedge them in place. And then I think I've gone for the same as before because I liked the way that the butterfly sits against the polka dot there. And then that one's going on the bottom. Okay, so I've got my kind of busier prints and colour on the bottom pieces. And then this is the last one. So that will hold that one in place. And I've got, although saying that now I've finished with the flowers. So the idea was that I've got that nice pink here and also at the back with this kind of whiter one in the middle. So again, it just kind of balanced things. And then I've got that one on the bottom, like so. So I'm going to stick them all down again because I'm using mirrored card. I do prefer to use double sided tape. So I'm going to use my red here. I've got so many rolls of the very, very thin because it doesn't get used, it's not the most common. So before I order any more, I'm just going to go through and use this up. So it does take me a little bit longer, although I'm not gonna cover the whole surface. I'm just gonna really just do the edges here, but I'm gonna go and stick them all down. So 
trim folder. So just go along and just burnish all those score lines because I didn't do them when I was telling you all the sizes. Okay, so they're now all stuck down. So next you want to now stick these all together. Now, the way I'd done it, what was my final measurement? I think it was eight and a half because obviously it was for the eight and a half envelope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I gave room for anything you have overhanging. So yeah, the, the actual length is eight, but that means it will fit nicely into the eight and a half envelope. And if you do, like I said, decorate like I have, I've gone over there and there, it will still fit in that same one. So with that in mind, if you bring up the first one and I'm just gonna pop the glue Actually, I need to burnish. I haven't burnished anything and it's bouncy everywhere. Let me grab my... So now, pop the glue there. Yeah, now it stays perfectly. Right. Line it up with your grid. Doesn't matter what your grid is, whether it's centimetres or anything, you're just really using the line. So you just want to keep everything nice and straight. So mine's now running nice and straight with this line here at the back, although you can't see it that well. Next, I'm going to add this one. And then I'm going to add this one. Now I think I each kind of piece here coming away was one inch, just over one inch maybe. So what we got, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, it was one inch. So I can see my card here because it's six by six, it's just lining up here. So this one I want to be just coming down here and then this one just there. So can you see on the side here, I've got this even so this is one inch, this is one inch. It doesn't have to be one inch, but as long as they're even, so if you want to do three quarters of an inch, you might want to do two inches and make an even bigger envelope. Or you might have a smaller square to start off here. You might be using five and a half and five and a half. It's entirely up to you, but just make sure you keep these kind of equal distance. So I think it just balances everything out nicely. So yeah, I'm going to keep my grid in place and then I'm just going to cover most, you know, more than half of this. You just want enough to keep it kind of obviously in place, so just like so. And then I'm gonna bring this back up again, just fold that over for a moment. That would have been better, like so. And then I know you wanna get it in the middle as close as you can, so you've got equal overhang, your border here. And then I just need to go up a little bit more, like so. And I think I'm happy with that. All sets. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this one up and again stick my glue over most of it and again line it up with this line here. Come over that side a bit. Stick that down. So it doesn't matter what measurement you do, but just make sure you get these equal. And the, you know, the the amount this comes out is the same as the amount that that one are there as well. Okay, so now they will automatically hold each other up. And then once we put our little stopper on this front one, and if I bring it up, because this has got the silver, look how lovely it looks when it catches the light. It's so cool. Oh, it all looks wonky there, but it's because I'm trying to hold it all together. So that's it, that's easy. Now it's the decorating, which is even easier. So it's not a difficult card to do. Every one of those is gonna sit over the top. And again, if you're one of these people that just likes to make a lot of you know, blank cards ready to decorate later, then there you go, it's ready. You can make the envelope, pop it to one side. I always like to protect mine in the envelope clear sleeves. And then you can come back to it and decorate it you know, later. So what I might also do is stick down my message panel at the back before I put all the decoration on. So this one is gonna go nicely in there. Again, it's entirely up to you. You might wanna put it inside like I mentioned at the beginning. So again, I'm just gonna stick that one down. And then for decoration, I use the flower border um, single flowers. So rather than the actual whole border piece, and I've got something pretty coming up with this one uh, soon, but um, these ones here, and look at the flower that they create. You get all these levels to it. So you can see there, and I used the larger one of this on a couple of cards that I've shared over on my creative card series earlier on. But aren't they cute? I love this little white piece here, just there. It's really, really sweet. So I've done the larger two of the mediums and then one of the, two of the small, sorry, to go all over it. And then the butterfly is this one here, which is from the butterfly band set. 
and it is this one here and there's the body and I think that's what really makes it for me, it's what brings it together. I've used some of the Crafter's Companion Pearl cardstock and I've put vellum on the back there as well. Isn't that lovely? So yeah, that's what I've used there. So I'm going to decorate it the same way. I've got my glue gun on, ready to go. I've put some foam adhesive on the back of my piece there, so that one is going to go on the very front there. And then this is my stopper, so I fussy cut two of the hearts from the paper pad, stuck them together and popped some foam adhesive, and that is going to go there. And because it's raised, it will then stop that smaller one from slipping and hold that all into place as well. So yeah, I'm gonna, as usual, pop this on high speed so you can sit back, enjoy, and I'll be back when it's all finished. Okay, so there is my card finished. Again, I should be able to bring it up a bit better now for you to see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> like so, I really love it. I think it looks so cute. So now it's just down to your envelope. So I'll fold that all down. So I'd already cut this down to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. I think I might use the star actually this time. Yeah, because that's just like before. So we're gonna use the star side. So as I said, it's the six by eight and a half, so it's the very last card size. So 11 and a half by 11 and a half, which we already have. Your first score line at four and seven eighths. So I feel like I've made this envelope size quite a lot lately, but it is really handy. So four and seven eighths, I'm just lining it up here. Punch and score. Rotate it all the way around to the opposite side. Again, four and seven eighths. And then just bring this down until that line lines up with the top of this kind of little corner here. Punch and score all the way around to that one. Yeah, bring it along and punch and score. And then fold and burnish all of your score lines. And then because it's a bulky card, I like to sit them in there. And you can see what I mean, you've got a nice amount of room because it's bulky, it's better to have it a little bit bigger. It just means you won't squash anything. And all these bits here can sit here quite freely without getting damaged. Bring them over and then we're gonna stick. It, it just makes it much easier for your card to fit in. So you're just gonna run a strip of double-sided tape along the two bottom sides of these side pieces bring them over and then bring up the bottom and allow it to curve and kind of you know shape itself to that card that's in there and that way like I showed before now when you take it out you should have a bit of a bubble and it just means that it's just going to fit in there much nicer also you should always anything with detail you should always put the card in upside down and that way it will always go in nice and smooth and it won't catch on anything and then because this has got a pinky reddish background I'm going to stick with this tape because usually I swap to my other double-sided white tape, but I'm just gonna run two thin strips along here. Now that's all ready to post. So again, take that one out, just burnish that top envelope one. I'll burnish all the sides as well, so that won't affect anything else. But yeah, I need to put the white bit on there as well. I always like to do that when it's patterned. Otherwise you can't really see who you're writing it for. So that's five by two and a half. And I'll, I'll do that after I've finished the tutorial. Okay, so there are my two, I think, rather pretty square triple easel cards. And I love them. You can easily downsize this if you don't like to send bigger cards. I would say start off with that one, maybe five by five. Even, you can even do four and a half. You could, if, you could start it the size of this one. So you have that one, that one, and then you could do, that was three and a half. So then I'd do a little one and a half by one and a half. 
So, you know, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. I am, you know, I like bigger cards, so I tend to always go, go big or go home, but that's my preference, but it's very easy to adapt. So I hope you like it. For those of you that asked, I hope you enjoyed this one. And um, yeah, I've got more shapes to do. So watch this space, because I'm sure I'll do a few more of this kind of style, but with some more obscure shapes, let's say. So anyway, until next time, enjoy your day. Hope you liked the tutorial, thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching, bye!